The Bible says in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 5, it says, And it come to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, uh, uh, that they stood by the lake Genesaret and, and, mm, and saw uh, two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Father, in Jesus' name, we do bow before thee this morning. And God, we're so grateful and thankful that you're our God. And God, you're our Savior this morning. And oh God, because of you, and Lord, we have a privilege and an honor, Lord, to pronounce your name and, uh, and to preach thy word. And God, we pray this morning. God, would you, as the psalmist prayed, would you open up the ears of heaven? And oh God, this morning, would you have prayers? And God, would you be merciful to us once again? And God, hide us behind the blood. And uh, Lord, under the blood and behind the cross this morning, Lord, that we may be thy vessel and thy servant. And God, would you give us the words that need to be said? I realized this morning, uh, oh God, I can do nothing without you and all things through you. And God, I pray this morning, God, would the sweet Holy Ghost intervene. And God, I pray you'd feed the sheep of thy pasture. And God, I pray this morning, uh, oh God, if it be one here lost, undone, not knowing you as Savior, uh, oh God, this morning, Lord, would you commission the sweet Holy Ghost to go by them? Uh, oh God, would you prick their heart? And God, would you reveal yourself to them? God, we love you this morning. Thank you for first loving us. And Lord, we ask in this in the name above every name, the wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, Amen, Amen. amen. You may be seated this morning. Uh, by way of introduction, may I say, uh, hey, when you study and read the Word of God, you'll find in chapter 4 that we, Christ in His life, He is a preaching in the Sayagons. Uh, oh, but here, uh, when it begins in chapter 5, uh, we find Christ in crisis at a very particular place. Uh, he's found Himself uh, between the crowd uh, and the Sea of Galilee. Uh, oh, and can I say, here we find Christ, uh, and the Bible says that the people were pressed upon him. Uh, that word simply means uh, hey, to be pushed upon uh, a close gathering uh, or physically touched. Uh, it means that the people there, uh, hey listen, they wanted to hear uh, what Christ had to say. Yeah. Oh, wouldn't it be good today if even if God's people that's yeah. been saved yeah. would have enough of God inside of them uh, or that they would press upon him, they would lean upon him. Uh, oh, listen to me, that they would want to know what Christ has to say for their life. May I say this and say it very kindly. I believe a lot of us and a lot that's in the world today, uh, they're missing the, the, the treasures that God has laid up uh, for our life is because we're not pressing upon God. We're not seeking God. Uh, we're not trying to get close enough to God to hear what God is saying. I find myself, uh, hey, moving so fast, traveling so far. Oh, listen to me, begging and pleading with God, but yet I find myself not listening to God. We're all guilty of that very thing with the activities that we have in our life. We're so busy, we're doing this for God, and we're doing this for God, but are we missing God? It's good to... Mm, it's good to be doing a lot of things for God, but we can't do them without God. And can I tell you, man, uh, uh, mentality uh, has built up so many riches and, and so many avenues that we do things without God. Man can do so much without God. Example, look at the world. They're building and they're building. And yet they don't even know our God. Here we find at the beginning of chapter 5 that the people was interested in what God had to say. If it's anything we're going to grasp this morning, you and I, uh, as we begin 2020, uh, oh, can I tell you this morning, it would be pleasing to God, I believe, uh, if you and I, uh, hey, would get interested in what God wants to do and what God wants to say. Oh, can I say the people, they're interested. Uh, listen to me, in what God's got to say, uh, what God has done. Uh, oh, listen to me, and what can be done through him. 
In so much the Bible says uh, it gives us an illustration that it was so important to them. Uh, listen, they were pressing on God. They were leaning on Him. Here Christ is here to do the Father's business. Uh, oh, listen to me. And He's revealing the Word of God. And the people are impressed uh, until they are pressing upon God. Uh, a eager, a desire, a hunger. Wouldn't it be good if we could find a church that had that hunger today? Wouldn't it be a great challenge to you and I if we today would just sell out for God? I wonder what God could do in my life and I wonder what God would be able to do in your life if we would just surrender to God. I have found my very self and I'm chasing rabbits, I know. We learn just enough to get us by. Come on, talk to me a little bit. You're no different than I am. We learn just enough to get us by, Brother Jordan. And then we'll get on our journey and we'll accomplish things we say is through God and for God and by God and God ain't nowhere near it. Say amen. It's nowhere near it. But here you find Christ. Uh, oh, listen to me. Uh, hey, the crowd is pressed upon him. They're leaning upon him. And they got him in a place. Uh, oh, it seems that it may be a struggle for God. But can I tell you, God never struggles. Yeah. Yeah. See, God's not struggling with the position my life's in. And God's not struggling with the position hey, your life is in. But God has given us avenue of escape. Yeah, that's true, man. Oh, can I say, uh, hey, they, hey they, they impressed by him. Uh, oh, the, hey, there beside of the Sea of Galilee, they leaned upon him, interested in what he's got to say. Oh, it would be my desires this morning if you and I like would get interested in what God's got to say. I wonder what God could do in our life if we really got interested in him. We set goals and we set ambitions and the Bible says without a vision people perish. Come on, somebody say amen. But wonder what God would do in your life and what He would really do in my life if we got back interested in Him. If He could be first. We look at all the accomplishments and, and accomplishments is good. Say amen. We ought to be doing something. Somebody say amen. But sometimes our accomplishments... Of ourself. Wouldn't it be good if we could get interested in Christ that we would lean upon Him, we would impress upon Him, and here we find Christ. He should say he, he, he's in a he's in a predicament. Uh, it doesn't have anywhere else to back up to. But look what He does. Uh, look with me at verse number two, and the Bible says, uh, "Oh, as the people leaned upon Him, He said He saw what." The Bible says that he saw two ships. Uh, oh, can I say uh, this morning uh, how, with him, uh, hey, being pressed upon, leaned upon, pushed back to the edge of the Sea of Galilee, it did not bother Christ of the position that he found himself in. But he opened his eyes uh, to see what was available. Can I tell you, there's a God today and he's a looking He's looking. And you know what he's looking for? He's looking for what? In our lives. That we would make available to him. You know what I don't find in these scriptures, Pastor? I don't find in these scriptures where he asked Simon or the other people that was with him, the other fishermen that was with him, Jordan, I do not see where Christ asked them uh, to change anything of what they were doing. Only thing he asked him, uh, hey, listen, I pray ye uh, that I might be able to use your ship. He didn't tell him to stop washing his nets. He was looking, uh, hey, when he got in this predicament uh, of people leaning upon him, he was uh, looking to see what was available that could be used for the ministry of God. God's looking at your life and God's looking at my life and he's not asking us to change anything. 
He's not asking you to give up your family. He's not asking you to give up your job. He's not asking you to give up your career. He's not asking you to change anything. He's just asking us, what is it in our life that could be made available? That what could be available that we could go on doing exactly what we've been doing and what we've been doing. Most of us enjoy what we've been doing. I found that to be true because if I don't enjoy what I'm doing, I do something else. It's our human nature. God's not asking us to change anything in our life. Just like he was there, pushed up against the sea of Galilee, hey, ministering to what the Father had given him to say unto the people, and the people being interested that they were leaning upon him. It did not fret him. It did not bother him. It did not disgust him. Can I tell you, God knows where we at. God knows what we're going through. God knows what we got our back up against. God knows. He just began to look. The Bible says he saw, Pastor. He saw. That tells me he was a looking. Does not our Bible tell us he's the same yesterday and and forever? He's God. He changes not. So regardless what is congesting our life, hey, what we're going through, there is a God who's looking into us and he's seeing what's available. Can I tell you, uh, hey, he's seeing what's available. Can I tell you, uh, this boat, uh, I don't have time to go there because I'm on a time limit. (laughs) The boat, the ships are not even in the position that they were made to be used for. Uh. (laughs) Let me say that again. It went over your head. The ships are not in the position that they were designed to be used for. The Bible says, and I believe the Bible to be true, say amen. Amen. The Bible says they're by the sea. They're not in the sea. The Bible says they're by the sea. Oh, can I tell you, uh, listen, some of our lives, uh, it's not in the position that Christ wants it to be, but oh, can I tell you, he's still looking into what belongs to him so he can see what's available that can be used for the position that we're in. See, in our worst position, Christ can still get some glory out of what he's done for us. Say Amen. Oh, listen, they were sitting by the sea. Oh, listen to me, they were there. They were just being still, Jordan. They wasn't even at use. When I was real penciling this down, can I tell you, uh, I thought, what is it in my life that's just still? What is it in my life that although I'm energetic and I'm laughing and I'm jumping up and down and I'm shouting, can I just go ahead and report to you? Sometimes I cry. There's sometimes I hurt. There's sometimes when I'm sad. But see, when you go church to church, can I just be honest with you? Hey, you you just got to be wide open. Because that's how everybody knows you. You're just in the position that you really didn't look to be in position that day. Yeah, look at that. Wow. Yes, sir. Here we find them. They're not even in the sea. Hey, they are there by the sea, Brother Jordan. You know what they're doing? They're just still. They've been put up. They've been pushed aside. We don't need it right now. Aren't we having fun? Yeah. Amen. Nothing I told you is not true. See, when the fishermen got done with them, Brother Jordan, hey, they pulled them out. Uh, hey, they was finished. Uh, and I'm getting ahead of myself. They was done for the night. They had no purpose for them. So they didn't even leave them in the position they was designed for. They just put them on the ground up beside the sea. See, some of us, I wonder if we gotten over that we got saved by the marvelous grace of God. 
We're created in his image and his likeness. We've been born again with his, therefore a new creature. I wonder if we can comprehend this morning uh, uh, for the year 2020 who we really are. So it was just by the sea, being still, not even functioning. They were there. Christ saw them. Why? Because he's a looking. But they wasn't doing anything. I wonder how many of us, God knows my heart, I don't mean to be unkind, but I did come to preach this book. I wonder how many of us has got things uh, and positions in our life. Uh, it's just still. It's there. Hey, it's got a purpose. Oh, but we're not using it right now. We just got it sitting in a place. And it's just being still. Can I tell you there's a God and God is looking and God is longing. Uh, he has a desire oh, that we can see ourselves. In the light that he is looking at us. So the still things in our life, uh, oh, look here, can go back into functioning. Are you listening to me? Uh, hey, God's not done with us. Uh, he's not through. God has not thrown in the towel. Are you with me? Say amen. Hey, this thing is not over just yet. Make me want to giddy up and go. Somebody say Amen. Oh, listen to me. It's not even in the position that it was designed to be in. Oh, God is a looking uh, to what, who and what is available in our life. Uh, oh, can I tell you? He's a looking. What would God find in your life this morning? What would God find in my life that's just being still? Just being still. It's by Christ but it's not being used for Christ. See, the ship was by the water, but it wasn't in the water. Oh, can I say, look what he says, and I got to run on, I got to run on. See, he saw two ships uh, uh, standing by the lake, uh, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their net. Look what verse 3 says, And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and he prayed unto him that he would thrust out a, a little from the land see not only do you see the people leaning on Christ but you see Christ looking to see what available but you see the lending of the ship Christ is a perfect gentleman he's a perfect gentleman he asks Simon he says I pray thee he says I pray thee do you know why God could have just commanded the ship to get up off the, by the sea and get into the sea? To, are you with me? Say amen. Our God could have commanded all things and they would have come to pass. But yet Christ being who Christ is, oh, listen to me, he prayed and he asked Simon, he said, could I loan you, would you loan me your ship for a little while? Hey, would you lend me something? Look here, listen to me. He didn't ask him for anything that he was using when he asked for it. He just asked him to loan something that was sitting there being still, not even setting the position that it was designed for. You know what Christ is doing today? I believe he's really wanting you and I, uh, hey, just to loan him something, to lend him something. Listen to me, that we're not using. Just give him permission. Say, God, here I am. Uh, fill me up. Uh, set me free. Uh, build a fire within my bones. Uh, and just yeah. fill me up and let me go. Yeah. God is just looking for you and I to lend him something in our life. That's just there. And you know what I believe? I believe the New Testament church, they don't even realize the value of the little things that's in our life that God can make great things. Well, as much when Christ is in it. Oh, listen to me here. The lending of the ship. Oh, look at the ship just standing there doing nothing at this time. Oh, there's a God. Listen to me. We can do all things as we've been told this morning in Sunday school. We can do all things to Christ. Nothing is impossible those in Christ. 
What a challenge. You know, I'm just redneck enough, I'll jump in there. Somebody say amen. I'll just do it. You say, well, preacher, I don't know. Well, that's the difference between you and I. I sure don't want Christ to come back and there be something in my life that I could have loaned him and I could lend him that he could have got the glory and the honor for and could have been used to help God's people and to rescue the perishing. Oh, he asked me, he said, I pray thee. He said, I, I pray thee that you, hey, you, that you lift out, you go out. Uh, hey, look here, just a little from the land. He said, listen, he said, I want you to, I, I want you to loan me this. He, he says, but I'm not asking for much. He said, I just want you to go out a little ways. Amen. See, guys is not asking us to do something that's uh, hey, impossible. He just wants the little things in our life, uh, little as much when God is in it. God just wants us to do a little. Look at me at verse number, verse number four very quickly. The Bible says that they thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and he taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, he said, launch out into the deep. Wow. He said, launch out uh, into the deep. See, the boat was out there a little ways according to the word of God. Uh, oh, can I say this morning, uh, oh, listen to me, they were sitting in shallow water. Yeah. Can I tell you something? You can't do much in shallow water. Right. Right. True. Yeah. You're not going to catch much in shallow water. He said, if you want to get involved in what I've got in store for you, he said, you're just going to have to take a step of faith. Uh, you're just going to have to believe in me. You're going to have to trust in me. And he said, you just have to launch out a little bit. Right. He said, if you're going to see me work in your life, uh, move in your life, uh, allow you to do things in the ministry in which I died for, he said, you're going to have to launch out there. What a challenge in 2020. Just take a step of faith. Uh, let these things that you say, let these things that you believe in come to pass. Just launch out there. Amen. Just launch out there. Yeah. Oh, listen to me. He told him he said, launch out into the deep. Uh, hey, there wasn't going to be much caught in the shallow waters. Uh, oh, can I tell you? Hey, he asked the fisherman to do something that wasn't norm. <laughs> wasn't their program. Can I get a witness right there? Yeah, right. Right. Amen. When, the, when their program, uh, it wasn't what they're used to. Uh, oh, listen to me. They fished at night. Uh, they had already came in. Uh, they were cleaning their net. He had asked them to do something that seemed impossible. Can I tell you? And, and I can't go there today for the time, but can I tell you? They fished all night, caught nothing. It just tells me sometimes when we're doing things for God, hey, look here, it's going to be Him that gets the glory and not us. Come on, say amen. Oh, but can I tell you, He told them to launch out. Hey, not being their favorite time, not their custom, not what they're used to to, 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 to catch fish. Oh, but can I tell you, sometime God's going to ask you to do things. He's going to ask me to do things that we don't understand to launch out in. But can I tell you, by faith, he said, at thy word. Hmm. You'll find out later on, he said, at thy word. What does it come back to? They were listening to God. <laughs> they were listening to God. Oh, listen to me to launch out. Oh, listen to me to launch out. There had to be a little work to launch out. There was no need of launching out if you didn't have the nets. Come on, y'all, talk to me. A lot of times, we do things without the very assistance that we need. And then when it doesn't work, we never realize that we did not have Him with us when we launched out. Somebody say amen. 
Oh, listen to me. Well, uh, to get the nets, oh, what did they have to do? Listen to me, they had to load the nets. They had to get the ship back. They're ready. Hey, so they could launch out. Are you with me? Sometimes we as God's people, let me help you. Hey, sometimes before we can launch out, hey, we got to get things loaded up. Uh, we need to get around the altar. We need to load up the altar. We need to get to praying. We need to get to seeking God's face. We need to get closer to Him. Yeah. Good. Good. Oh, listen to me. We need Him. Yeah. Oh, they had to load up the net. What did that mean, load up? Uh, can I tell you? It required some labor, Pastor. Yep. It required some labor. Can I tell you, if you and I are going to see God manifest Himself in us, and we're going to see God work through us, and God use us, it's going to take us loading up these ships that we're alive in, and it's going to take some labor. Yep. Good, yes, it's going to take some labor. If it's anything my wife and I have learned serving the Lord is it takes being faithful, it takes being dedicated, and it takes suffering. To do anything for the Lord. Got to be surrendered. He said, launch out. Launch out. Load the nets. Do some labors. Uh, hey, look here. We've loaded ourselves. Uh, hey, we've loaded ourselves uh, down, but not with the tools that we need. How many of us would be willing to labor for the Lord? Give you this, and you put the meat on them. When they did what God told them to do, when they got to the place that God told them to get, when they launched out, see, you're never going to get to what God's got for you until you understand that you got to launch out with Him. Got to launch out with Him. Yes, sir. And see, they could have never seen what God was going to do until they let their nets down. Right. Right. Yes, sir. See, we got to let some stuff down in our own lives. Yeah. We got to depend on what we got to stop depending on what we think and, and what we believe. This Bible is true. Amen. This Bible is true. Oh, the let the net down. Uh, why? At Christ's request. He said, At thy word. Yeah. What did Peter tell him? He said, hey, he said, listen, he said, Am I here in the deep? He said, I fished all night. Yeah. Amen. That's right. When you hey, have you ever done your best and feel like you haven't done good, uh, good enough? That's me. About every time I preach or try to preach, I feel like I failed and, and I failed and I failed. You can get in those real quiet pastors and you get up there. You can get in those that's jumping up and down and are shouting and praising God. I've been in them in all types. But me for myself, I always feel like I failed Him. I always feel like I failed Him. Oh, you just got to let your net, net down. He said, at thy word, you got to be willing to listen. Yeah. Come on, say amen. Yeah. amen. Got to be willing to listen. Uh, oh, listen to me. If you're going to get the load that God has got repaired for you, the rewards that Christ got for you, hey, listen to me. You got to listen to what God tells us to do to get your load. Yeah. Good. You read verse 9 and 10. I don't have time to go there. You say, listen to me. Hey, look here. They learned from Christ if they would depend and trust in what he said that their life would have an abundance in it. Yeah. Are you with me? Say amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you and I you and I this morning would learn uh, hey, to let our net down, to listen to Christ, to receive our load, uh, hey, it would teach us what Christ what we could learn from Christ. Can I, can I say this and say it very quickly? Let's stop and think about the length the link that Christ was willing to go in this portion of Scripture. Just some L words, preacher. The link that Christ was willing to go with them fishermen to prove to them who He was. What power He possessed. How great He was. 
Why don't you and I stop this morning and think about this? Do you realize or have you got over or, or listen to me, has it left your memory how far Christ went for you and me? Yeah. Hey. Right. I got it. He went all the way to Calvary and got to the place of the skull. He laid his life down that we may have life and have it more abundant. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The link that Christ went just to reveal to some fishermen who he was. Let me just go and hammer this a, a little bit. Hey, it impressed them so much that they left with him. Mm, yeah, somebody yeah. say amen. Yeah. Amen. It did something for them, Pastor, that moved them, that stirred them, that had mixed up something that had never been mixed up before, and that impressed them. Yeah. That what they used to do didn't mean nothing to them no more. And yet you and I take Calvary so lightly. <laughs> Do you even, can you even comprehend this one, how much God loves you? Come on, do you, ask you, can, can you understand how much God loves you and me? Or you and I this morning? The length he was willing to go to reveal himself to us. He didn't die on the cross off of Peter and Andrew. I just say, just keep the net, keep the boat. Oh, Dad, you can have it all. I met someone that I seen something in him. He moved me. He stirred me. I've never seen a man like this before. Wherever he goes, I'm a going. Whatever he says, that's what I'm a doing. I ain't backing up, slacking up, or shutting up. I'm taking up. I'm going to get in his footsteps, and I'm going to follow him all the way. You know what? We need some people in 2020. Uh, oh, listen to me. That'll just step out by faith uh, and just get behind God uh, and just fell in love with him. Leave some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just leave some stuff. They left. They left it because of the length he was willing to go for. A couple of questions and I'm done. Do you know the length that God went for you? Can you even comprehend how much God loves you this morning? Oh, if I could give you a measurement this morning that would even sit with mankind, I still wouldn't be able to describe it. How much God loves you this morning. You know what He wants? 2020. Wouldn't it be good if we could see 2,020 souls saved next year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all say, well, I don't know. I don't talk to me. Just leave me alone. Just get away from me. I don't mean that unkindly, but oh, ye a little faith. I believe him. I trust him. I've seen, I, I, I don't, I, I'm not a boastful person. God taught me to be humble a long time ago. When God does something, that's God. I don't try to get on Facebook, your book, her book, everybody's book. <laughs> don't even have one. I'll just serve God. Somebody say amen. amen. Preacher, we had 46 saved in Morong Baton two weeks ago. I know it don't do a thing for y'all. Show does five me up. <laughs> Makes me want to giddy up and go. Make me feel like I done got up and gone. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. I know it ain't big, hey, big Baptist preaching, but it feels good to me. <laughs> 2,020 souls. Uh, you think about just this church and our missionaries and the programs and the events and the revivals and the activities that this church is involved in. Why can't we? Why can't we? You know, if I go a step farther, yeah, if you and I, Rich, one, yeah, 
<laughs> now I'm going home with you. You don't like it, do you? You've done turned against me already. Because, see, I got you involved. But if everybody in here just won one, would be doubled. Now, I'm not saying that the church would double. But it'd be twice the many souls. Somebody say amen. But it'd be doubled. Wouldn't take much. Wouldn't take much. All this, God got to get in it. Preacher made mention of that tent, and here I go, Lord. I love that tent. Woo! Glory be to God, I love that tent. I can holler. Are y'all with me? Say amen. amen. See, if I holler in here, y'all going to say, man, he's loud. I can holler under that tent and under God, under God, nobody thinks I'm loud. <laughs> I can have myself a time. Whoa. I know, that scares y'all. I can't wait till that tent gets here. I can't wait. Why? Because I know what God can do. I know what God can do. If you and I, if you and I would let Him look in our lives and let Him see what's available that we could lend Him, we could loan Him. Somebody say amen. That we would have the ability to launch out a little farther for Him that we could let down our net listen to him and learn from him are you with me what do you want God to do in your life in 2020 what you looking for God to do in your life in 2020 I want to see God move I want, I, I want to be everything I could be and more for God. Somebody say amen. I want Him to move me. I want Him to dwell with me. I want Him to own me, control me. Jordan, I just want to be sold out to Him. What about you? How many in here right now say, Preacher, in 2020, I don't want to do something. I want to do more for God. How many would say that? Raise your hand. I want to do more for God. I want to do more for God. I want to do more for God. Can I tell you where to start? I'll tell you where to start this morning. If you were sincere when you raised your hand, you said, Preach, I want to do more for God in 2020. It'll start by you having enough faith to get up out of them pews, get on this old fashioned altar, and begin to lift your petitions to God in heaven. Everyone stand, every head bowed, every eye closed. As the pianist comes, they begin to play. As they begin to play, why don't you step out? Why don't you come? Why don't you get around this altar? Oh, let's just give God what's due God. Let's loan God. You know what? He owns us anyway. He owns us anyway. You know, no doubt this morning, as, 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 as we've been in this service this morning, you know and I know both that every single one of us in this place, we've got lost loved ones that need to be saved by the grace of God. Oh, can I tell you, why don't you get a burden for them in 2020? Oh, why don't you come and why don't you bow down and why don't you lift up their name to God? Oh, listen. He's a looking. He's a looking. Can I ask you a question? What is he going to find? What is he going to find? Do you struggle to find good Bible based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.